to couch. How big couch. a space is this? The, the side that I'm talking about was not super big. It was about the size of this living room. Okay. A little bit bigger. Okay. A little bit longer, but not wider. So we're talking maybe 25 by 15? I'm not good at meters, but okay. I'm so, I don't I know. Oh, his feet. Oh, his feet? Oh. Because I'm thinking feet. I'm still American. I'd say a little bigger than that. Okay. Yeah, a little good. bit bigger. Not much good. bigger, but a little bit. Okay. And the couches were about this long. Okay. About an eight, ten foot couch. Yeah. Okay. Um, the desks that I mentioned were about yay long. Okay. About five feet. Yeah. And then, um, then there's a spiral staircase. Okay. Very, very narrow. Okay. That goes up to a second floor, like, overlooking office. Loft-like. Loft-like. O- open, the, they can look down upon... If they open the shades of their the windows, they can. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So, so it's enclosed. So it's loft-like, but... So you could see it from the first floor. Correct. But it's not open to it. Correct. Right? It's, it's, it is yeah. held behind So in, in normal jock times, like the way it functioned before uh, this crisis, that's where the senior, the director of the jock would, that's where his office was. Got it. So that way he can walk out. There's a small little catwalk. He okay. can walk out and look at the entire jock. And, and, uh, yeah. Good. Got it. Got, Got it. it. I Got it. Yeah. Now on the Good. other side, there's also a spiral staircase with the same thing with an office the same size. And that was more of a conference room for okay. senior staff. Okay. But I'll get to how these were used Good. during this evacuation. Good. And then, down here, on the, so on the opposite side of where General Donahue's office was, mm-hmm. there was another office for um, another military person. Okay. I don't really know who was using it. I think at the time I was there, I think the defense attache from the embassy Kabul was using it. Okay. Then there's a set of glass double doors. Mm-hmm. So they were see-through and like a metal closing mechanism. It didn't lock. It was just a way to kind of stop sound. Okay. Close it off. Um, Yeah. But I think it was open on top, so Mm -hmm. it didn't really stop sound. It was just to make things quieter. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, um, so you you go past those doors, which were typically kept open, but at times we closed them. Um, So this was the consular side. This is the part that we took over. Okay. It was assigned to the embassy. Good. And then you, the, the front entrance yeah. area. Good. You go past the doors, and there's another office on this side right here. Okay. That's where the consular supervisors' leadership, the, the head of consular for each shift, okay. that's where they would work out of. And at times, I would go in there for one-on-one meetings or to talk about sensitive things with the bosses and okay. stuff. So there's a small little office here. And then... There's a hallway that goes down each each side. Okay. And there's, I didn't. It was. It, it wasn't until close to the end that I ever went down one of those hallways for work purposes. And there's some offices on each side, which were used for various things. Okay. And then, this is where the actual jock. When I, you know, when I when I explain like the military part of the jock. Okay. So. So that's the real, the most northern part of the building. Yeah. Good. More and than half? Uh, more more than, than half. Two-thirds. More than, good. Yeah, two-thirds. Um, so there's, on this wall right here, there were, say, eight flat screens like this. Okay. That would go, maybe more than eight. Maybe, good. Maybe even, about eight, I think. Yeah. Good. And then um, a big, you know, the clock things with the, with the red dots that shows Zulu time, yes. Kabul time, yes. Washington time. You know, whatever I forget the other times that it yeah. showed. Yeah, you see that in like the White House Situation sure. Room. Yeah. yeah, so there's one of those yeah. long, long uh, uh, horizontal clocks. Good. And then there's the jock has desks um, in an operations floor type setup that is typical in a government operations center. It, it really any agency, it kind of all looks the same. So I would say there were about ten. Different desks, okay, and then along in this northern half, mm-hmm. uh, northern two thirds of the uh, the jock, and then along the northernmost wall, there was also a line of like one, two, three, four, 
four desks. Okay. So in total, there was probably like 14 different desks. Got it. And all each, staffed? Yeah, all staffed by people in uniform. Good. Each one corresponded to a different specialty. Okay. So all, all American. Mm, so yeah. at times there were Brits okay. and Aussies and Canadians. Good. Because uh, um, it was like a NATO jock, I think. Got I mean, it was all Five Eyes. Have you heard okay. the term Five Eyes before? I have not. Five Eyes is a, like, it, it, uh, it's a, how do I call it? An intelligence sharing agreement used by the government, the okay. intelligence community that includes, uh, so the US, uh, England, Great, Great Britain, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. Okay. And it was called five, the Five Eyes. Okay. Yeah. I meaning E Y E S. Understood. So sometimes there would be one of the other Five Eye countries, but it was predominantly almost almost all Americans. Okay. Yeah. And um, there was also here there was like a, a row of desks that were unused. Kind of, kind of right underneath where the second floor spiral staircase area was. Okay. So and so each of these military desks, there was like the the drone operators, so the intelligence people, the flight line operations, the logistics people, the medical people, all the different um, elements Good. that make up like a Good. military. So they, they, J. Is always the acronym. So there's the J2, there's the J37, there's the J5. Okay. I forget what each one stands for, but um, I know J2 is intelligence, but I, I forget what they all are. So, and every morning they would have an all hands at 7:30 in the morning, all hands meeting. Okay. Where they would brief the general, the commanding general, of updates. Okay. And then any other time there was an important update, like a crisis, um, that's where the you know, nucleus of operations would happen. Great, great. So, mostly stayed on the State Department side. Um, so when we got there, I saw people were kind of like packing up their backpacks, getting ready to get off shift. And I ran into a colleague of mine from DS, who I hadn't seen in a couple of years. We went through RSO, the RSO course together in 2016, mm -hmm. named Justin. And and we were like, oh, hey, dude, like, how are you? I haven't seen you in so long. And so we were always friendly. We didn't like we were we didn't like keep in touch, but we were always you know friendly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we just you know, hey, great to see you, and you know, I'll see you. He said he's getting off shift. He's about to go to sleep. I said cool. Uh, maybe I'll see you tomorrow or something. And then, so we sat. I sat down on a chair or on a couch. I don't remember. And oh, I don't really remember who was in charge at that point. Was it Carlos maybe who said like, we'll give you assignments soon. Just like hold tight. Mm -hmm. Whatever is in the journal entry is correct. I just don't remember right now. I met the consular team of about eight people on day shift, as well as Gene, the consular officer in charge. Jim went upstairs to the jock using the middle star spiral staircase yeah. to an office overlooking the entire jock, yep. just as described, to meet Am Ambassador John Bass. Um, I spoke to Gene to ask specifically what I was supposed to be doing on the ground. I was sent by NEA Bureau, not Consular Affairs, so I thought maybe I'd be doing political officer or staff work. Gene said they really needed bodies for consular work. If I can get permission from Bass to do this, it would be a huge help. I walked upstairs to ask Jim and yeah. Ambassador Bass what they wanted for me. They looked at each other and shrugged, said consular needed me most at that time. Yeah, so that's, that's, all, that's all accurate. Good. Um, so Jean was there. I think Jane Jane hadn't yet arrived. Okay. Now Jean I had met in 2019 briefly. I had to go through this course called FACT, Foreign Affairs Counter Threat, which is um, basically a five-day version of the DS High Threat Operations course. Okay. So it's meant for any diplomat, including from other agencies like the USAID or Commerce Department or um, even the defense attaches have to go through. It's kind of silly. Um, it's a good course, just five days familiarization. Like, so you don't really, you, you don't really, you do some medical stuff. It's a very elementary school version of what the high threat course is. Okay. So I, I, I ended up, I went through with Jean in 2019 and I met her because I sat, her last name is Akers, mine is Aronson. And oh. We sat alphabetically, mm -hmm. so we sat next to each other for, you know, the portions of the five day course that we were in classroom setting. So she didn't remember me. I remember.